Hello everyone, I'm Jay and this is the Camden Stitch. Or if you read in the captions underneath, I'm Jay and I'm Canada's bitch. Um, hello and welcome back to Sewing on a Budget. I hope you've all had lovely weeks. Um, Saturday morning you should be watching this if you watch it as soon as the ding ding notification comes up and today we're going to be talking about how to buy cheap fabric. I think this is the one that everyone was looking forward to um, because I do talk so much about bargain hunting and tracking down um, cheap fabric so without further ado I am going to be telling you about ways you can buy free fabric. There ain't much of it about but we'll have a look into that. Um, cheap fabric and then fabric that is perhaps not cheap but how to get it cheaper than the price that you see on the screen or in the shop. Um, I'm also going to be having a philosophical debate on the ethics of haggling. <laughs> Does that sound like fun? Um, okay, right, cheap fabric. When I talk about cheap fabric I don't mean cheap looking fabric or poor quality fabric I mean getting nice quality fabric for a cheaper price and so that's what we're going to be talking about today right let's talk about how we can get free fabric if you watched the segment on sewing machines then you will know that getting things free isn't an overnight um, or an instant hit you do have to put in a bit of graft and a bit of research and mainly a bit of patience actually um, so, and it's pretty much the same with free fabric. It is out there. You can find it, uh, start off in, in the same way as finding free sewing machines, which is that if somebody has got a relative who doesn't sew anymore, and they do tend to be elderly people, then often they will have a stash that they no longer want. If they can't um, use their sewing machine anymore, then they can't use their stash either. Um, so that's the first way to find free fabric. It's obviously not very common but it is worth asking around uh, then there's free cycle um, it can be found on free cycle people might be getting rid of off cuts they might have ha previously had a crafting habit they might just be having a clear out it's worth looking it's worth searching regularly you can sign up for the free cycle networks which are in the description box below uh, and just keep searching with keywords fabric sewing etc don't search in my groups or i'll be fighting you for it a really good way of getting free fabric is through connections with other sewists. We all tend to have fabric that we have decided no longer meets our needs for whatever reason. Sometimes it's because people have given it you and, um, you know, it's just not something that you're going to use. Um, or, you know, you could have won it, it might have come as part of a fabric bundle. Um, and sewists are really often quite... Um, willing to give that fabric away or swap it. Uh, fabric swaps are a brilliant way of getting free fabric. Now you do have to obviously contribute something yourself and it's nice if you can give something that is kind of nice and you would want it rather than just sort of scrag end of fabric. Um, it's a bit of a case of you, you get out what you put in. Uh, although having said that, if you saw my video of So Southampton, you'll see that I bagsied some lovely uh, dog tooth fabric and some gorgeous yellow gingham seersucker. And the fabric I gave away wasn't half as nice as that. Um, but hey, you know, we've all got different tastes, haven't we? So that is a few ways you can snag yourself free fabric. If anybody else knows of some more, then do um, please pop them in my downstairs and uh, I'd really love to know and I'll, I'll obviously share them with everybody when I do a roundup at the end of this series. Um, so let's talk about how you can get cheaper fabric. I have got an absolute slew of ideas for this one. Um, so does anybody have jumble sales anymore? I haven't seen one for ages but if you're lucky enough to live in a place that still has jumble sales then they are an absolute mecca of free fabric because people will get rid of a lot of linens and stuff and where there are linens there is fabric. Duvet covers are an absolutely brilliant source of cheap fabric and they're brilliant for twirls, they are brilliant for making things like pyjamas because they tend to be very soft and washed um, and 
a double duvet cover will harvest about eight meters of fabric and that is a lot of bang for your buck there you can also try car boot sales now car boot sales is similar but there are a few tricks to um beadily eyeing the fabric at car boot sales unfortunately fabric isn't the easiest thing to display and it tends to get finished up on the floor in the bottom of a suitcase with a load of other kind of belts or thing other things that are difficult to display so where you tend to have all um, clothes are hung up on a rail then you'll often get some solitary bedding languishing on the floor somewhere probably getting trodden on um, keep your eyes peeled keep them close to the floor that's where you tend to find the fabric if you see somebody who tends to be clearing out all sorts of household bric-a-brac then just ask them unfortunately in um, in the quest to grab a bargain it does involve asking people constantly and I'm always trogging up and down Camden High Street going in the charity shops asking them have you got any patterns have you got any sewing patterns have you got any cheap have you got any fabric have you got any linens um, often charity shops won't have fabric knocking about but they will have linen section where there's curtains duvet covers lots and lots of things that you can use for fabric you have to be persistent obviously not everybody is going to want to make a dress out of a pair of curtains we aren't all maria von trapp but if you keep on looking i can guarantee you will find something that makes um something that you would want to wear i have made a lovely checked skirt out of some fabric that I think was upholstery fabric that I got from a charity shop in Aberystwyth last year and um, yeah I've had loads of things like duvet covers that have been brilliant and I've also harvested my own bedding <laughs> so ask keep your eyes close to the floor um, be vigilant if you are walking around a car boot sale with a partner do not let them rest idle tell them to be looking out for these things if they're the chat you want then tell them to be asking about these things um, you don't get bargains without being uh, persistent talking of persistent and of being chatty uh, let's talk about markets as you know I am a massive lover of a good market stall one of the things I enjoy about markets is chatting to the stallholders and I think that by chatting to stallholders you build up a better relationship and you are more likely to snag bargains by doing that. Now I don't necessarily mean that they will give you a discount but they are more likely to tell you they may recommend fabric that you like if you tell them that you're on a budget they may be they may be able to point you in the direction of the cheaper fabrics i just want to touch a little bit on the ethics of haggling with market stall holders somebody said that they wanted me to advise them on haggling i am not sure that i am okay with haggling with market stall holders their margins are tiny um they stand out all day in heavy weather and their job is quite hard work i am not 100 percent sure that they have the most wriggle room on their prices now i'm not hard and fast on that okay on walthamstow i saw a shop selling a fabric which i had bought for three pound a meter in their one pound a meter section now if i saw that fabric being sold for three pound a meter i wouldn't have any problem saying to that stall holder they've got it cheaper down the road will you do me a better price on this because that stall holder is likely to have bought that fabric for the same price as the one that's selling it for one pound a meter but a lot of these stall holders won't have a lot of wriggle room on their price so I think I would only really ask for a discount in the circumstances I've mentioned or if I was spending a lot of money I think if you're spending maybe 50 quid plus it's legit to say um, is there any chance you would round this down for me or um, throw in an extra meter um, I think that's perfectly legit and fair enough um, another great way of getting a bit of a bargain on market stalls is when I was in Amsterdam a lot of the market stalls had several rolls of the same fabric on the stall go for the roll that's got the least on it it may be that they will give you what's left on the roll for a cheaper price than the per meter price so for instance at the rag market I got 
for I asked for three and a half meters of a fabric there was four and a half meters on the roll he gave it me for the price of I think three and a half meters so I got a meter free um, now that's I can't work out percentages that's almost almost a quarter free almost 25 percent free there um that you've got so although it might only be a discount of a couple of quid it's still 25 percent extra free that's worth having so those are my little tips really for getting a little bit extra um but we are talking about quite um small amounts here and when somebody's standing in the rain selling you fabric for one or two pounds a meter I don't really want to ask them to take a lot they're probably making a profit of maybe 50 pence on each meter and I'm not really comfortable slashing their profit down to 40 pence or, or um, 30 pence I do have a tip for you about haggling by the way I was talking to my best friend o about this and I was saying the trick about haggling is to take away the idea that it's a confrontation. Now, as Brits, we aren't very good at this. Um, in, in situations of negotiation, often um, as soon as somebody has challenged, the other person tends to immediately become defensive. And that leads to a bit of a, a standoff situation. And that's the opposite of what you need. Um, keep it light keep it friendly and be prepared to take no for an answer all right so i'm spending 10 pounds with you and i might say would you do it me for eight and if they say oh no chance you're cheeky then i'll say well no harm in asking you know and change the subject stay friendly stay smiling and take no for an answer you're more likely to get yes for an answer by being like that. I know it's not easy, but actually I used to be a really shy person and the idea of doing this would have mortified me at, at one point in my life when I was maybe in my early 20s. Um, but it's something that I've learned and I've learned it and I've got better at it and I've got good at it. And now I will often get a discount. Um, but like I say, some of that is by knowing when not to ask for the discount. Still on the subject of getting cheaper fabric, look for factory sales near you. Check Instagram, search for hashtags like factory sales. Um, look, is, look for any industrial estates near you. Try and find out. I mean, you could even have a look in something like the Yellow Pages or local ads. See if there's anywhere near you that might be doing a factory sale. Small factories might not have a marketing person or a social media person, so that might be the sort of situation where if you're passing by, it's worth asking, oh, do you ever have sample sales? Do you ever have clear outs? Do you ever have factory sales? You might just get lucky. Um, you won't get lucky every time, but persistence pays off with these things. There used to be a great factory sale up near me um, in North London near Finsbury Park that used to do factory sales once every three months. And if you look at my um, some of my uh, fabric haul videos that I've done, you'll see that um, I used to go there regularly. They haven't done any for ages and I'm gutted because you could get some real bargains there. They would sell off all the kind of f funny shaped 1.5 metre pieces that had been chopped off by their students at the end of rolls. But you know, it was brilliant value, absolutely brilliant. Um, so keep your eye out for factory sales. Um, keep your eye out for D stashes on Instagram. Now I, there are pros and cons to buying at D stashes. Um, you can get some amazing bargains and I've had some wonderful bargains, but I've also had people trying to make a profit on their D stashes. Now making a profit isn't a crime and I've made a profit on some of my D stashes. However, that that doesn't mean that you should pay more than things are worth a lot of it is knowing the value of the product that you're selling and if you have something good quality that you got at a bargain price then it may be that the price that you're asking for it is a perfectly fair price but i've had people sell things on 
I've spied people sell things on D-stashers that Pound Fabrics were giving away, well not giving away, Pound Fabrics were selling for a penny a metre and I've had them, uh, I've seen them try and sell them for two pounds a metre on uh, D-stashers. Now that's a pretty big markup. Um, make sure that when you buy at a D-stash, make sure you're not paying more than things are worth. Also, the way that D-stashes work, I love it. I love buying in that way. I'm a big do devotee of things like Colville Fabrics where they do live sales. It's great fun, but being in that moment of clicking can encourage you to spend more than you've budgeted for. So do just be aware of that if you're on a budget. Um, maybe set an upper limit for how much you will spend at that sale. If, you're, if you've decided that you're going to, you know, Sunday night D-stash sale, you're going to sit, then maybe set an upper limit for how much you're prepared to spend. Um, and that way you can kind of cap how much you're spending and not get lured into spending more than your budget. Speaking of pound fabrics, there are some great discount, fabric discounters online. Um, you have to know what it is that you want and I think it's quite good if you if you um, check their reputation. Pound Fabrics has got a great rep reputation and if you look at, previously to being Pound Fabrics they were a seller called Adam Ross. They changed their name, they decided to go for the more discount side of things but they had a good reputation as Adam Ross Fabrics and if you look on Instagram then you will often see sewists who've made stuff in their fabrics so you can get an idea of their fabrics and if sewists are happy to, to post about the things that they're making with the fabrics that gives you an idea that those those sewists are happy with the fabrics that they're getting so they are happy with the price that they've paid for the quality that they're getting. Um, pound fabrics do always tell you if they're selling seconds fabrics. Excuse me now seconds are great ways of getting discounted fabrics there may be a little flaw on the fabric but often the flaw is hardly visible and so long as the retailer is telling you uh, about the fact that there may be a small flaw then you know I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. I've bought seconds fabrics many times without any problems. I've bought fabrics not marked as seconds that's had a flaw in it and you know I'm less happy about that and I would usually go back to the retailer and complain about that always check so just one mention then before I finish the cheapest fabrics um, I have to give a shout out for places like the shops in Walthamstow that I go to a lot um, there are several places on Walthamstow High Street that sell very cheap fabric and what I would say is have a strategy in place for shopping at these places they tend to be exceptionally busy um, one of my favourite shops, I would spend a lot more money in there but I actually have to get out of there because I go in and I'm immediately overwhelmed. It's incredibly busy, people are shoving past you, it's difficult to get the salesperson's attention. Even when they're cutting for you, you feel the pressure of other people waiting for their time. So, you know, that, that makes me feel anxious that I actually want to finish um, at, and I could actually shop there all day. I would spend a lot more money, but um, also it's quite crowded, so it's really difficult to look at the fabric and check it, for instance, for any flaws. Now, some of the ones I shop in, I actually have never had a flawed fabric from them, and those fabrics that they do sell with flaws in are very obvious to see, and they'll sell those in the 50 pence a metre section. Um, so it's not like I feel like I've got to drag every roll out, check it all fully, like I do in some other, other shops, which uh, ironically don't actually sell at a discount. So I would, uh, when I shop in those shops, I tend to go when it's really quiet, first thing in the morning on a weekday, uh, just when they're opening. Uh, I also have got to know the shop owners so that they're friendly with me, they're more likely to give me sort of quicker service because they know that I'm, you know, somebody that will spend a decent amount of money with them. I'm not somebody who's going to ask for a metre and a quarter and then haggle over the price. Um, you know, they know that I'm a, a good customer, I suppose. However, there are other shops uh, on Walthamstow High Street that I have had less good experience with. They do still sell 
fabric at a good price and it's worth shopping with them however there a lot of their fabrics I've had have been flawed or damaged and it's not always apparent now I do still shop there but I, I make sure that I check the fabric I take the time in the, in the shop to check the fabric the other day they sold me some fabric that had got a hole in it um, now it was only one pound and I had only bought one meter but um, had I known that there was a hole in it, I would have asked them to give it me for 50p. Um, <laughs> there you go, you know, I mean, it's they're not selling it as, as damaged, and it's damaged, so um, give me a discount or I don't want it. Um, so have a bit of a strategy. Don't be afraid to speak to them seriously and in a friendly way. If the product has got any faults, then explain, look, there is a fault running through this fabric. I do really want it, but because of the fault, it means I'm gonna need three meters instead of two because I'm gonna to need to cut around the fault. Would you be able to give it me for the pr three meters for the price of two? You know, just explain it to them. Just explain that you're a real person wanting to, you're not out to swindle them or give them a hard time. You just want to make your dress. And, um, and often that approach gets a, a good result. Those are my top tips really for buying fabric at the very cheapest price. Um, now, I did say that there are ways of negotiating a discount on slightly more expensive fabrics. Let's talk about retailers, large retailers where it's not always easy to negotiate a discount. First of all, if you are in a shop where there might be a manager on the shop floor and you're spending a decent amount of money and by that I'd say maybe a hundred pounds plus then you could ask the, sh the shop assistant if they are willing to give you a discount. The shop assistant is usually likely to say no and I would probably not take no for an answer. I'd probably say, um, is there a manager around? And then Ask to speak to the manager, and this is a Martin Lewis tip, ask to speak to the manager away from other people. If you ask to speak to a manager on a till point with a queue growing behind you and the manager feels that they're setting a precedent, they are going to feel compelled to say no. If you speak to them in a friendly way, away from other people so that the, the manager doesn't feel like they're going to get 20 other shoppers all asking for the same discount, explain that you're here, you want to spend a lot of money, would they be willing to maybe give you a little bit of a discount? And if they ask you, well, what are you talking about? Then, you know, maybe ask for 10%. They might not give you 10%, they might give you 5%, but you still will have got yourself, all right, Jane tries to work out what a 5% discount of 100 quid is. That's pretty, pretty bad maths. You might have just got yourself a fiver. Well, that's just gone towards your lunch bill, hasn't it? Just while we're on the subject of discount fabrics, I want to mention places like Abacan, the temple at which I worship. Now, we all know that I love Abacan, but if you have a look at my uh, fabric haul that I did from Abacan Shrewsbury, uh, where I worked out the price per metre of all the fabrics, you will see that I got really good quality fabric at a decent price, but it wasn't the cheapest price in the world. And it was a really fair price and I really like the quality of fabrics that you get at Abacan but don't be fooled into thinking that just because you're buying fabric by the kilo that you are getting it for an absolute rock bottom bargain price. At Abacan they usually have at the side of the remnant bins a piece of fabric hanging up with a an indicator of how much this one meter piece of fabric would cost you and that gives you a really good idea of the price per meter for this type of fabric so they'll have one for wax print they'll have one for viscose they'll have one next to the jerseys etc so that's really helpful for giving you an idea of how much the price per meter is so that you don't get carried away the other thing is if you're going to a place that's outside your hometown on a bargain fabric mission don't forget to factor in the cost of petrol or the cost of train fare. Now, my easiest Abacan to get to is in Manchester. Now, the train fare to Manchester is about 100 quid return. So if I get some cheap fabric, fabric at Abacan and then factor in the 
the cost of my travel and the cost of my coffees that I've had to have on the train and my lunch, then it soon bumps up the price per metre of the fabric. It's fine if it's a holiday experience for you, a day out experience, then obviously, you know, like for me, going to the Abacan warehouse sale was like, it was a the most fun thing that I could imagine that I was doing. So that obviously takes into account some of the price that you're paying for the journey etc but it you do just have to factor in things like that what about if you're shopping at somewhere not a bricks and mortar store you're shopping online but it's not the sort of place that you can ask for a discount well keep your your eyes peeled for discount codes follow these retailers on their social media uh, most of them will often have discount codes if you shop somewhere like Minerva Crafts then they do have the Minerva Crafts Club that gives you a permanent 10% discount I think and then a 20% off every so often. Now if you tend to use somewhere like Minerva to buy a lot of basics then that could really work out well for you. Um, however I would say that shops like Minerva you can get a lot of the stuff that they sell you can buy it cheaper elsewhere so um, it just depends how you prefer to buy things often people will shop somewhere like Minerva because it's familiar and they tend to stock everything so you normally know that you can get everything in one place and a lot of people like that so if that's your preferred buying experience then consider the cost of signing up for the craft, the craft club you might want to sign up to a blogger team don't think you necessarily have to have a blog to to be on the Minerva Crafts blogger team um, I think that they might just take people with Instagram accounts who are posting quite a lot so you maybe need to be quite active uh, but they do call outs periodically and I've not known people be turned down for it I think pretty much anybody can get on it so that's a way of getting free fabric however the fabric isn't quite free because you do have to produce a piece of work for it you have to make the garment and you have to write a blog so you have to have writing skills and you have to be prepared to put the work into making the garment so you know and you might not always get the fabric that you want it's not a matter of just being able to choose any fabric uh, unless you're actually in their blogger network which you do have to write a blog for um, but there are other teams, blogging teams, like the Sew Me Sunshine blogger, t blogger teams and lots of fabric stores have blogger teams um, that you might be interested in writing for and that's a way of getting free fabric. If you are buying a large amount of fabric from a online store, say, um, I'd say 10 metres plus, um, maybe not a discount fabric but if it's a for a project so you're buying something like silk for a wedding dress or bridesmaid dresses I would think it was worthwhile to drop them a line through their inquiries and ask if they do discounts for bulk purchases they might be able to give you a small discount on the product that you're buying Fabricland will give you a discount for buying large amounts and sometimes it's 10 meters plus now 10 meters of something like lining fabric, if it's like a neutral coloured lining, uh, works out very worthwhile to do. You could consider splitting that with friends and say, you know, oh, shall we both buy this white or black lining and uh, buy 10 meters of each at the, at the cheaper price and split it in half. If you have a sewing wife then I would really recommend clubbing together and uh, buying more at a discount price and that way um, you know you split it and you get it a little bit cheaper. Um, I think that is pretty much all my bright ideas for getting discount of fab on fabrics for today. Please let me know if I've forgotten anything or if you have any other top tips. Um, yeah, pop them below and I'd love to share them. Um, it would be great to pull our resources. Um, if I've mentioned anything in this vlog I will link to it in the description box in my downstairs. I hope that you've had a great day. I'm absolutely knackered. I've been doing lots and lots of things today for my side hustle which I will be talking about in another vlog um, and it's starting to get really hot so I'm going to sign off. It's been great fun talking to you about sewing on a budget today. I really hope that I um, provoked some thought for you to save some money in your sewing and I will look forward to seeing you very very soon. 
have a lovely weekend sewing sisters and misters if there are any of you watching but my stats tell me that there aren't any so let's just stick with the girls for the moment love you bye love you bye ding ding bye <laughs>if you saw my video um about so southampton then i must love doing this i'm like always doing like this.